Throughout history, at no time has it been more obvious that you are being led, controlled, and manipulated than today. One look at the political system and you can clearly see it is rigged. You believe you are a citizen of a free country where your vote determines the path your country will take. You believe that your decisions as a free citizen can influence and change the world you live in. You believe you live in a democracy. Nothing could be further from the truth. From the beginning, mankind has been influenced by powers greater than himself. Homo sapiens appeared on this planet 195,000 years ago. Neanderthal man was already present, but Homo sapiens, or modern man, appeared suddenly and had the highest intellect. We immediately set about building monuments and creating civilization. The earliest known writings were laid down in clay tablets by the Sumerians thousands of years ago. They tell of a master race who came from the stars and created humans to work as slaves for them. We were taught culture and agriculture by this race known as the Anunnaki. Throughout our early history, man has written about gods or wise people who helped humans grow and learn. All of our religions through time have centered on gods who descended from the stars to rule over man. Humans have been taught to heed to their greatness or feel their wrath. And though mankind was in its infancy when these gods arrived, we still live with downturned eyes towards them today. Our entire culture has always been and remains today one that defers to an elite group of government and religious overlords. We are no different in modern times than those who enslaved us under the watchful eyes of an elite oligarchy. The 2016 presidential campaign in America is a clear demonstration of how this powerful elite manipulates the public to ensure their candidates are poised to achieve control within their structured hierarchy. The media, both broadcast and social, are used to sway opinion in a specific direction so that you choose a candidate they want you to follow. You are systematically herded like sheep into a thought process that keeps the power elite in position to rule over you. All the while, you think you had freedom of choice in this process. The leaders you believe you selected were chosen long before their campaigns began and the election you participated in was nothing more than a show performed before your eyes to herd you into submission. Who are these overlords that govern you? Who selected them? What do they use to control you? And where do they derive their power? The common theme with conspiracy theorists about a new world order is that a secretive power elite with a globalist agenda is conspiring to eventually rule the world through an authoritarian world government which will replace sovereign nation states. An all-encompassing propaganda whose ideology hails the establishment of the new world order as the culmination of history's progress. Many influential historical and present figures have been purported to be part of a cabal that operates through many front organizations to orchestrate significant political and financial occurrences as well as significant world events as steps in an ongoing plot to achieve world domination through secret political gatherings 
and decision-making processes. During the 20th century, many politicians, such as Woodrow Wilson and Winston Churchill, used the term New World Order to refer to a new period of history characterized by a dramatic change in world political thought and the balance of power after World War I and World War II. They all saw the period as an opportunity to implement idealistic proposals for global governance in the sense of new collective efforts to address worldwide problems that go beyond the capacity of individual nation-states to solve, while always respecting the right of nations to self-determination. These proposals led to the creation of international organizations such as the UN and NATO, and international regimes such as the Bretton Woods system and the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which were calculated both to maintain a balance of power in favor of the United States and to regularize cooperation between nations in order to achieve a peaceful phase of capitalism. These creations in particular and liberal internationalism in general, however, were regularly criticized and opposed by American paleoconservative business nationalists from the 1930s on. American televangelist Pat Robertson, with his 1991 best-selling book, The New World Order, became the most prominent Christian popularization of conspiracy theories about recent American history. He describes a scenario where Wall Street, the Federal Reserve System, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group, and the Trilateral Commission controlled the flow of events from behind the scenes, nudging people constantly and covertly in the direction of world government for the Antichrist. Since the 19th century, Many apocalyptic millennial Christians, started with John Nelson Darby, have predicted a globalist conspiracy to impose a tyrannical New World Order governing structure as the fulfillment of prophecies about the end time in the Bible, specifically in the book of Ezekiel, the book of Daniel, the Olivet Discourse found in the Synoptic Gospels, and the book of Revelation. They claim that people who have made a deal with the devil to gain control and power have become pawns in a supernatural chess game to move humanity into accepting a utopian world government that rests on the spiritual foundations of a centric messianic world religion, which will later reveal itself to be a dystopian world empire that imposes the imperial cult of an unholy trinity of Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. In many contemporary Christian conspiracy theories, the false prophet will be either the last pope of the Catholic Church, a guru from the New Age movement, or even the leader of an elite fundamentalist Christian organization like the Fellowship, while the Antichrist will be either the President of the European Union, the Secretary General of the United Nations, or even the Caliph of a pan-Islamic state. Freemasonry is one of the world's oldest secular fraternal organizations and arose during the late 16th and early 17th century Britain. Over the years, a number of allegations and conspiracy theories have been directed towards Freemasonry, including the allegation that Freemasons have a hidden political agenda and are conspiring to bring about a new world order, a world government organized according to Masonic principles and or governed only by Freemasons. Some conspiracy theorists eventually speculated that some founding fathers of the United States, such as George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, were having Masonic sacred geometric designs interwoven into American society, particularly in the Great Seal of the United States, the United States $1 bill, the architecture of the National Mall landmarks and the streets and highways of Washington, D.C. as part of a master plan to create the first Masonic government as a model for the coming New World Order. Perhaps the most well-known group said to be bringing about the New World Order is the Illuminati. The Order of the Illuminati was an Enlightenment Age secret society founded by University Professor Adam Westphont on the 1st of May of 1776 in Germany. The movement consisted of advocates of free thought 
secularism, liberalism, republicanism, and general equality recruited from the German Masonic lodges who sought to teach rationalism through mystery schools. In 1785, it was broken up by the German government, but many say the founders went into hiding and continued their secret society to this day. Illuminati conspiracy theories in the U.S. Right-wing populists, such as members of the John Birch Society, subsequently began speculating that some collegiate fraternities, such as Skull and Bones, Gentlemen's Club, Bohemian Club, and think tanks like the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission of the American Upper Class are front organizations of the Illuminati, which they accuse of plotting to create a new world order through a one world government. The Council on Foreign Relations began in 1917 with a group of New York academics who were asked by President Woodrow Wilson to offer options for the foreign policy of the United States in the interwar period. Originally envisioned as a group of American and British scholars and diplomats, some of whom belonging to the Round Table Movement, it was a subsequent group of 108 New York financiers, manufacturers, and international lawyers. The Trilateral Commission was founded in July of 1973 at the initiative of American banker David Rockefeller, who was chairman of the Council on Foreign Relations at that time. It is a private organization established to foster closer cooperation among the United States, Europe, and Japan. The Trilateral Commission is widely seen as a counterpart to the Council on Foreign Relations. Conspiracy theorists, such as American writer Jim Mars, claim that some ex-Nazis who survived the fall of the Greater German Reich, along with sympathizers in the United States and elsewhere, given haven by organizations like Odessa and Dysfine, have been working behind the scenes since the end of World War II to enact at least some principles of Nazism, such as militarism, imperialism, widespread spying on citizens, corporatism, the use of propaganda to manufacture a national consensus, into culture, government, and business worldwide, but primarily in the United States. He cites the influence of ex-Nazi scientists brought in under Operation Paperclip to help advance aerospace manufacturing in the U.S. with technological principles from Nazi UFOs and the acquisition and creation of conglomerates by ex-Nazis and their sympathizers after the war in both Europe and the United States. Since the late 1970s, extraterrestrials from other habitable planets or parallel dimensions such as the Greys and interdimensionals from hollow Earth such as reptilians have been included in the New World Order conspiracy in more or less dominant roles as in the theories put forward by American writers Stan Deo and Milton William Cooper and British writer David Icke. The common theme in these conspiracy theories is that the aliens have been among us for decades, centuries, or millennia, but a government cover-up enforced by men in black has shielded the public from knowledge of a secret alien invasion. Motivated by speciesism and imperialism, these aliens have been and are secretly manipulating developments and changes in human society in order to be more effectively controlled and exploit human beings. Alien infiltrators have shape-shifted into human form and move freely throughout human society, even to the point of taking control of common positions in governmental, corporate, and religious institutions, and are now in the final stages of their plan to take over the world. A covert government agency of the United States codenamed Majestic 12, is often cited as being the shadow government which collaborates with the alien occupation and permits alien abductions in exchange for assistance in the development and testing of military flying saucers at Area 51 in order for the United States Armed Forces to achieve full-spectrum dominance. 
conspiracy theorists generally speculate that the New World Order is being implemented gradually, citing the formation of the U.S. Federal Reserve System in 1913, the League of Nations in 1919, the International Monetary Fund in 1944, the United Nations in 1945, the World Bank in 1945, and the World Health Organization in 1948, the European Union and the Euro currency in 1993, the World Trade Organization in 1998, the African Union in 2002, and the Union of South American Nations in 2008 are major milestones. American right-wing populists state that the hypothetical North American Union and the Amero currency proposed by the Council on Foreign Relations and its counterparts in Mexico and Canada will be the next milestone in the implementation of the New World Order. The theory holds that a group of shadowy and mostly nameless international elites are planning to replace the federal government of the United States with a transnational government. Therefore, the borders between Mexico, Canada, and the United States are in the process of being erased, covertly by a group of globalists whose ultimate goal is to replace national governments in Washington, D.C., Ottawa, and Mexico City with a European-style political union and a bloated EU-style bureaucracy. American right-wing populists, especially those who joined the militia movement in the United States, speculate that the New World Order will be implemented through a dramatic coup d'etat by a secret team using black helicopters in the U.S. and other nation-states to bring about a totalitarian world government controlled by the United Nations and enforced by troops of foreign U.N. peacekeepers. Following the Rex 84 and Operation Garden Plot's plans, this military coup would involve the suspension of the Constitution, the imposition of martial law, and the appointment of military commanders to head state and local governments and to detain dissidents. Those who are all strong believers in a right to keep and bear arms are extremely fearful that the passing of any gun control legislation will be later followed by the abolishment of personal gun ownership and a campaign of gun confiscation and that the refugee camps of emergency management agencies such as FEMA will be used for the internment of suspected subversives making little effort to distinguish true threats to the New World Order from pacifist dissidents. Recent revelations of NSA spying on American citizens and phone tapping are said to be methods governments use to keep tabs on citizens for control purposes. The New World Order will also be implemented through the use of human population control in order to more easily monitor and control the movement of individuals. The means range from stopping the growth of human societies through reproductive health and family planning programs which promote abstinence, contraception, and abortion, or intentionally reducing the bulk of the world population through genocides by mongering unnecessary wars, through plagues by engineering imminent viruses and tainted vaccines, and through environmental disasters by controlling the weather with harp and chemtrails. The worst fear of some conspiracy theorists, however, is that the New World Order will be implemented through the use of mind control, a broad range of tactics able to subvert an individual's control of his or her own thinking, behavior, emotions, or decisions. These tactics are said to include everything from Manchurian candidate-style brainwashing of sleeper agents such as Project MKUltra and Project Monarch to engineering psychological operations with water fluorination, subliminal advertising, and parapsychological operations to influence the masses. The concept of wearing a tin foil hat for protection from such threats has become a popular stereotype and term of derision. The phrase serves as a byword for paranoia and associated with conspiracy theorists. Is it possible to narrow all of these theories down to just one? Or are all of them elements of the single goal of those in power seeking to bring about 
a new world order? Who is behind the New World Order? Is it simply a cabal of people controlling the world, or is there someone or something behind the cabal? Military engineer and geologist Phil Snyder was a brave whistleblower who went public in 1995 and was murdered by suicide a year later in 1996. He is the one who first voiced the sentence, the New World Agenda is the Alien Agenda and he would have known, because according to his claim, he personally came face to face with both hostile gray and hostile reptilian ETs while working on the construction of deep underground military bases. Incredibly, Snyder got into a gunfight with some of these ETs, which resulted in an exchange of fire where Snyder was wounded and the ET was killed. Snyder's accounts include a host of other stunning claims, such as detailed descriptions of underground bases and cities beneath America, the U.S. government's secret deals with hostile ETs, the advanced alien technology being used by secret U.S. agencies, the existence of Element 140, mining operations on the moon, and the alien New World Order genocidal agenda to reduce the Earth's population by 85%. As much as possible, Snyder backed up his assertions by showing his scar to the cameras, as well as what he claimed was a sample rock of Element 140. Cynthia Dreyer, Phil's ex-wife, has highlighted the many suspicious details surrounding Snyder's death. Snyder was close friends with Al Balak, the man involved in the Philadelphia Experiment and Montauk Project. In his video, Balak reveals special information that Snyder had confided in him, including tales of seven-foot gray aliens dictating policy at a secret UN underground base, and how Snyder secretly flew to Japan in a private jet to reveal how the Kobe earthquake was a nuclear attack by the U.S. Snyder's account is also corroborated by the Dulce Papers, which talk of a fight between humans and aliens in 1979 at the underground base at Dulles, New Mexico. For those still skeptical, the work of various alien, UFO, and abduction researchers is very compelling. The work of Dr. David Jacobs, a tenured professor of American history at Temple University for 37 years, who has interviewed over 150 alien contactees or abductees. Jacobs found in the accounts a repeated theme of extraterrestrial beings abducting and sexually molesting humans to create a race of hybrid human aliens. Bud Hopkins, who developed his own hypnotic regression methods to help heal the trauma of thousands of alien abductees who he realized had become mere specimens in an ongoing ET genetic experimentation on humanity. The common thread running through these cases was the fact that the abductees had a sense of missing time and that their reproductive organs were often tampered with. In some cases, Female abductees were found to have one missing ovary with no apparent scar tissue to show how it was removed. There are many level-headed former governmental and military operatives who have attested to the existence of an alien agenda. For instance, the whistleblowing efforts of Bob Dean, who has given an abundance of presentations about his time at SHAPE, Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe, at the top of NATO. Dean tells the story of how NATO knew there were ET craft above our skies, commissioned a study to see what could be done about it, and that the conclusion of the study was that the ETs probably had no hostile intentions and were here to observe, because if they had really wanted to enslave or destroy us, they could have done it long ago. This was obviously a highly unsettling conclusion for the military brass to deal with, 
but so was another of Dean's revelations, that the top commanders at the Pentagon knew there was a very high likelihood that some alien species, such as the Nordic-looking race of ETs, appeared so human that they could walk right next to one and never spot the difference. Dean later himself had face-to-face -face meetings with some of these ETs who he claimed appeared indistinguishable from terrestrial humans. Humanity's history is replete with references to aliens. The ancient Vedic texts of India mention Vimanas or flying disks. Zulu shaman Credo Mutwa, introduced to many in the Western world by David Icke, tells many stories of how reptilian beings feature throughout his people's history. Zachariah Sitchin, Jordan Maxwell, and many others have talked about how the Bible itself originally stated Elohim, meaning the gods, not God, as it became mistranslated. According to Sitchin, two reptilian ET beings named Enlil and Enki of the Anunnaki seeded humanity. If humanity itself was created by an advanced extraterrestrial race as the article scientists find extraterrestrial genes in human DNA and others suggest, how could there not be an alien agenda with humanity right now? How could aliens not be intimately involved with our progress right now? And since the world is being pushed towards the new world order, wouldn't it be fair to assume it is happening in alignment with their desires, an alien agenda. Given the compelling amount of evidence, which not only indicates the existence of ETs, but also shows many are interfering in Earth affairs with a hostile agenda, it's surprising that there is still the belief out there among some circles that all ETs are benevolent and have humanity's best interest at heart. This is foolish nonsense, and dangerous nonsense too, because it gives people a false idea about our galactic neighbors and thus lowering their defenses and making them more susceptible to some kind of invasion or manipulation. For some reason, this notion has been pushed by none other than Dr. Stephen Greer of the Disclosure Project. Greer has done a truly outstanding job in bringing ET and UFO witnesses to light and has exposed many aspects of the conspiracy, including the suppression of zero-point or free energy technology. Sadly, because Greer is a leading expert in the ET UFO field, many blindly accept every word he says on the subject. He insists all the so-called negative interactions experienced by so many alien abductees are secret black military operations. Greer is dead wrong on this point as Kerry Cassidy and Bill Ryan of Project Camelot pointed out, as well as other leading experts on exopolitics such as Dr. Michael Sila, who wrote the rebuttal Exopolitics vs. Exospin. Some have theorized this is due to Greer's connection with Lawrence Rockefeller of the infamous Rockefeller family, one of the two main New World Order families, along with the Rothschilds. We are not alone and we never have been alone, as Bob Dayton says. That makes some people think humans are the only species with high intelligence or capable of rational thought in the entire known universe. It's narrow-minded to think so, and it is equally narrow-minded to assume that any extraterrestrial motive or alien agenda would be neutral or beneficial to us. The cosmos is brimming full of life of all kinds. We all need to remember the game is a whole lot grander than we think. The New World Order doesn't end with just political control, police brutality, indoctrination, assassination, infiltration, 
free trade agreements, geoengineering, international banking, suppressed technology or microchips, copious evidence shows it goes off planet into far more bizarre realms like the alien agenda than the average person could imagine. How many are up to the task of exploring and analyzing these realms to get to the bottom of the truth? It is time for the public to know the truth about the alien presence on our planet, what its overall goals are, and what we can do about it. The official policy of all governments has been to deny that extraterrestrial phenomenon even exists, but this is clearly nonsense given the overwhelming amount of leaked documentation, credible high-level testimonies, genuine experiences, and extensive research that proves otherwise. This is a topic that receives virtually no media attention or serious consideration by the majority of people. Yet the reality of advanced extraterrestrial life is one of the most profound realizations anyone can make. And it is one we must make if we are to continue serving as the preeminent stewards of this planet without losing our freedoms as a race. We cannot afford to be naive and ignorant any longer. For the magnitude of this situation becomes quite clear once you really see it for what it is. Most of us can fathom a human power elite vying for world domination, but we also need to consider the role that some extraterrestrial forces are having here too. It isn't to say that every ET race is interested in takeover. It is quite possible that many are interested in peace but it is also true that a takeover agenda could be the goal of some ET races. Our very freedoms depend on us seeing and knowing what we are truly up against. This is why genuine whistleblowers are so crucial at this time, as they can give us a unique perspective that the public is normally not privy to. Phil Snyder, a former government geologist and engineer with over 17 years of experience in black projects, is one of the most important whistleblowers in modern history. In his presentation at the Preparedness Expo in September of 1995, he exposes the gravity of the New World Order agenda and its connection with extraterrestrials in a direct and controversial manner. Less than six months after giving his talk, he was found dead in his apartment with piano wire still wrapped around his neck in what appears to be a military-style execution. According to some sources, he had been brutally tortured repeatedly before being killed. The authorities dismissed the death as a suicide. All of Snyder's talks contain explosive claims about government cover-ups, black budget projects, UFOs, and government military collaboration with aliens in deep underground bases. During his lecture tour in the mid-90s, he even brought with him physical evidence of alien metals, artifacts, and genuine photographs to further validate his claims. Snyder claims that all information dealing with aliens is kept well hidden from the public and that the U.S. military has known about the alien presence for more than 85 years, going back as early as 1909. He asserts that more than $500 billion was being allocated annually to black projects dealing with these matters in 1995. According to Snyder, 28% of the U.S. gross national product was being spent exclusively on building underground bases. This black budget sidesteps Congress completely and is a treasonous violation of constitutional law and taxpayer money. Without a doubt, these budgets and projects continue today on a massive scale. Snyder says there are 131 active underground bases in the U.S. with approximately 1,477 worldwide bases. 
Each one has an average cost of 17 to 19 billion dollars, taking approximately one to two years to construct using highly advanced methods. He says the U.S. government signed an agreement in 1954 with extraterrestrials granting them the right to experiment on humans and cattle in exchange for technology. This agreement was known as the Granada Treaty and is a well-documented event. The original terms for this treaty were that only a small number of humans could be abducted. They had to be returned to their original locations their memories had to be wiped, and the aliens were supposed to submit a list of the individuals they were taking to Majestic 12. However, after a few years of this, it became clear that the aliens were taking far more humans than they had originally bargained for, which spawned the origins of the alien-human conflict that persists to this day. Snyder claims that there are 11 distinct races of aliens here on Earth, with two of them being benevolent. One alien has been working at the U.S. Pentagon since 1943. He describes the alien agenda as the complete takeover of this planet, the killing off of five-sixths to seven-eighths of the world's population by 2029. An alien takeover would mean the implementation of a one-world government, which is the direct opposite of constitutional law, and would be the end of freedom as we know it. This is a very serious threat, and the implications must be taken seriously by all those who are against the New World Order. He has stated that the alien agenda is the New World Order, and the aliens are in charge. All world governments, presidents, and prime ministers are aware of this. Snyder goes on to explain that at least nine races of alien beings regard humans as a food source. They are not all cannibalistic. However, they use the glandular secretions of animals and humans for mixtures of the vitamins of their food and can actually get high from our adrenaline. This is why there are so many reports of cruel and sadistic torture that goes on at these underground bases, as some of the aliens literally feed off the fear-laden substances that humans emit in times of great distress. According to Snyder, there are more than 100,000 missing children totally unaccountable for from FBI archives in the U.S. alone. He believes that many of them are held captive underground and summarily done away with. In some cases, they are literally eaten. Human abductions by aliens is a serious problem and is completely disregarded and overlooked. Literally thousands of people are going missing each month and are never returned. This continues to occur today against the will of millions of people worldwide, many who do not even remember or realize they were taken. Snyder was finally terminated with extreme prejudice in January of 1996 after speaking out heroically for many years. His service and dedication to humanity, his country, and our freedoms will not be forgotten. The malevolent alien presence that is physically residing in secret on this planet is the biggest threat that humanity faces. Many people claim that if aliens were here this whole time, that they would have taken over already. There are several reasons why this is not the case. First of all, the aliens here are not military powers, and they are not going to reveal themselves with an overwhelming show of force. The aliens are much more cunning than that. They know that a far more effective takeover is possible through secretive infiltration, manipulation, and persuasion which can be accomplished without a single shot being fired. 
Secondly, the aliens have a very hard time living on the surface because of the biological and bacterial risks of contamination. This is why they stay underground, primarily as our germs have a tendency to harm and even kill them. The reason why they have been abducting humans and performing DNA, sexual organ, tissue experiments has been to create an alien-human hybrid race which has the physical endurance of humans along with the advanced mental psychic capabilities and social cohesion of the aliens. The allegiance of these hybrid beings is to the aliens ultimately, yet they look exactly like normal human beings. We would not be able to tell the difference if we were to see them in person. These hybrid beings are being created to serve as the next set of leaders once the New World Order framework is established. Deception will definitely be used when the extraterrestrial reality is presented to the public. It is possible that they will try to sell some kind of staged invasion threat in order to scare people into submission and a heightened sense of fear-based unity. Additionally, they will eventually present themselves as the saviors of humanity, seeming peaceful and attractive effectively playing both sides by offering us technology, wisdom, peace, and other forms of assistance to our most pressing problems. If we accept their offers, we are likely to become dependent on them and will eventually lose our self-sufficiency as a race. This is very similar to the television show V, where reptilian ET beings falsely present themselves as benevolent beings before ultimately enslaving the human race. Could this program literally be letting us know what is coming and what is already happening behind the scenes? We are not strong enough as a race yet to be engaged in extraterrestrial diplomacy. The aliens have been intervening in human affairs without our invitation for centuries and are acting in a deceptive and secretive manner. They should not be trusted until they prove themselves. Humanity needs to establish proper borders to space and realize that we must change our ways significantly in order to deal with advanced life forms who are attempting to prey upon vulnerable beings such as humans. These alien forces are very advanced technologically, but they are not advanced spiritually. They can perform feats and acts that most of us would call miracles. However, we can see past this with proper understanding. In fact, our greatest defense and offense is the application of the divine intelligence that resides within each of us. Collectively, we must speak out against this alien intervention and demand that we be told the truth about these matters. No longer can we sit on the sidelines and remain silent. Becoming educated about alien affairs is of prime importance for humanity's destiny to emerge into a greater community of intelligent life. While they are providing a great threat to our freedom, they are also providing us a crucial opportunity to realize that we are one planetary race and ultimately one human family. It is time to see past our petty insignificant differences and face the realities of life with objectivity, strength and wisdom. We must become sufficiently united to counter these threats create a sustainable paragon, and learn from interacting with other advanced intelligent life forms. They are counting on us remaining ignorant and complacent and arrogantly assume that we will not stand up to them. United we stand a chance, divided we will fail. The choice is ours. Einstein once said that a problem's solution cannot come from the same level where the problem originated. If human nature is the problem, then only a non-human element can be the solution. At present, the problem resides in the inevitable failure of both the secret government and future humans to maintain unconditional obedience to their alien masters due to fundamental genetic and metaphysical differences and the fact that we are individualistic 
and opportunists by nature. Once the New World Order is initiated, their solution is to place humanity under the leadership of a genetically engineered master race of alien-human hybrids. These hybrids surpass us in intellectual and psychic abilities, and they do not suffer from the weaknesses of human nature such as empathy and the longing for individual freedom. While maintaining control, they will then interbreed with the human population to infuse these genetic characteristics into humanity at large. Thus, in the end, mankind will be biologically predisposed towards subservience to the alien empire, alleviating the empire from having to expend unnecessary resources in forcing their control. At that point, we will be locked into bondage, and the alien agenda will have reached its conclusion. We are seeing evidence of this already. For example, we are being culturally preconditioned to eventually accept the policy of interbreeding between humans and hybrids. Standards of physical beauty embodied in supermodels and actresses increasingly move towards emphasis upon features typical of hybrids low forehead, small chin, triangular face, large eyes, and slim androgynous bodies. It wasn't too long ago that the hybrid look would have been considered disturbing and unhealthy, but today the trend has been towards the sexualization of these characteristics. Before the information age, knowledge was easily suppressed. Today, it is more easily corrupted with disinformation. The alien and secret government factions now work to suppress or corrupt truth wherever they find it. They seek and destroy those attempting to reveal truth, weaken others' ability to discern truth for themselves, and program the rest to immediately ridicule or ignore truth when they hear it. Individuals perceived as threats to the alien agenda receive custom attention. They are abducted and implanted for monitoring purposes. After being observed for weaknesses, they are repeatedly abducted and mind-programmed with post-hypnotic suggestions to indulge in self-destructive thoughts, emotions, and behavior. If they resist these, they are socially ridiculed or publicly discredited those with less spiritual resilience receive increasingly violent harassment. More generally, through the control system simply pumps out hundreds of disinformation vectors to fill the airwaves and drown out the real experiences, real researchers, and real spiritual freedom fighters with fantasy-based half-truths that are so fantastical and entertaining and sensationalist that the truth pales in comparison and thereby goes ignored. For many centuries, a small but immensely powerful cabal of the cult of evil has been working towards the day when they will be able to force the sovereign nations of the world to submit to a one-world government under their direct control. They have long planned for the day when they will come out of the shadows and declare themselves masters of the world and all things in it. A prerequisite for the world empire is a world bank and a world currency, and so great efforts have been made to compel the nations of the world to accept a one-world monetary system, which this cabal of evil will control. That is why control of gold, money, banking, and credit are integral to this agenda to create conditions necessary for the inauguration of the New World Order. Those in control of the New World Order, the Lords of Power, have been orchestrating this wicked, evil plan for centuries, and they have shrewdly understood that control of the monetary systems of all nations is the key to implementing an iron fist control over the nations of the world. The other main mechanism of control is the establishment of a world army and a world police force whose power will be almost limitless in their task of controlling all people, everywhere, totally from the cradle to the grave. And crucial to this is a cashless society and a microchipped population. The New World Order is not a conspiracy theory. 
It is very real, an agenda that has been acknowledged openly for decades, yet still people wave it away as if it is a fringe belief. Yet if you listen, you see this as an agenda that is hitting the final stages as they prepare to unveil the 2030 agenda, meant to control the world and implement their one world government. In 2015, the United Nations released Agenda 2030, or what it's calling a new universal agenda for humanity. Many are calling this the first public declaration of the long-feared New World Order, or the beginnings of a totalitarian one-world government. Whether or not one believes in the so-called conspiracy theory of the New World Order, the phrase New Universal Agenda and the phrase New World Order share the same linguistic meaning. The question is then, are they one and the same? At first glance, this agenda appears to be combating very serious problems on the global stage. Yet when one delves deeper into the logistics of the plan, it becomes clear that the act of suggesting what should be done and having a solution to the problem are two very different things. Most Americans are unaware of this worldwide agenda and that in itself should be alarming. A lack of reporting on a specific topic by the corporate media is the modern telltale sign of a topic that is actually newsworthy. Let's look at the 17 goals in the agenda and translate them for you as to their actual meaning. Goal 1. Centralized banks, World Bank, federal in control of finances, digital currency in a cashless society. Goal 2. Genetically modified organisms. Goal 3. Mass vaccinations. Goal 4. UN propaganda, brainwashing through compulsory education from cradle to grave. Goal 5. Population control through forced family planning. Goal 6. Privatize all water sources and add fluoride. Goal 7. Smart grid with smart meters on everything. Peak pricing. Goal 8. TPP. Free trade zones that favor mega corporate interests. Goal 9. Toll roads. Push public transit. Remove free travel. Environmental restrictions. Goal 10, even more regional government bureaucracy. Goal 11, big brother, big data surveillance state. Goal 12, forced austerity. Goal 13, cap and trade, carbon taxes, credits, footprint taxes. Goal 14, environmental restrictions, control all oceans, including mineral rights from ocean floors. Goal 15, more environmental restrictions, more controlling resources and mineral rights. Goal 16, UN peacekeeping missions, the International Court of Blind Justice force people together via fake refugee crises and then mediate with more UN peacekeeping when tension breaks out to gain more control over a region, remove Second Amendment in the United States. And Goal 17, remove national sovereignty worldwide, 
promote globalism under the authority and bloated Orwellian bureaucracy of the UN. It is quite odd that a plan of such relevance, such magnitude, is being completely disregarded by the mainstream media. The entire planet is going to be committed to work towards 17 mutual goals and there has been a complete media blackout in the United States. When there is a media blackout on a story or event, it is most likely a subject worth paying attention to. To collectively combat these major issues from a citizen level as a worldwide entity is a step in the right direction. However, these bullet point goals and their ambitious means to which to reach the end result have endless openings to be abused by the very same officials in which abuse every opportunity that is presented to them. This country's history is riddled with political deception and manipulation of the public and this worldwide plan has vast opportunity for the corrupt to follow suit. Another mass enslavement tool that they are using against us. It is the so-called educational system. Schools are no longer what they used to be and children are learning to memorize without thinking and obey without questioning. In fact, this established educational system is extremely expensive to keep operational and obsolete in the age of the internet. Why obsolete, you may ask? Because the internet gives us free access to almost infinite amounts of information. So why are we still paying huge amounts of money for governmental education? Because the world's elite require that our children learn conformity and inside-the-box thinking. Mankind's faith is hanging in the balance right now as the control of the New World Order octopus spreads. On one hand, we are very close to our complete enslavement, while on the other hand, we could easily crumble to the ground their pyramid of power by simply uniting against their deception in a peaceful revolution of minds, hearts, and souls. All of the world's biggest problems have their roots deeply embedded in the financial plague. Wars are profitable. Diseases are profitable. Earth's plundering is profitable. Human slavery and inhumane working conditions are profitable. Our leaders have been corrupted by money and mankind's massive collection on Earth has been hijacked by money. In most cases, the sole motivation for going to work is the next paycheck. And no matter how hard we work, we never seem to have enough money. Have you ever wondered why mega corporations reaping billions each year in profits pay dozens of millions to their CEOs and as close as possible to the minimum wage to the rest of the employees? This has been carefully designed because a person that is constantly on the edge will never have time for self-education, introspection, and eventually spiritual awakening. They don't need educated people who are capable of critical thinking and have spiritual goals. No, this kind of person is dangerous to the establishment. They want obedient robots, just intelligent enough to operate the machines and keep the system running, but stupid enough to never ask questions. The grip that corporate media has on the minds of the masses is strong and it does a great job at keeping the world ignorant and oblivious to events and concerns being raised by many experts in various fields from all over the world. The New World Order is the goal of a handful of global elitists who are pushing for a one world government and a heightened national security state with alien influence. The New World Order will not happen overnight. The idea was seeded a long, long time ago, and slowly but certainly it is weaving its way unsuspectedly through the monetary, political, religious, cultural, educational, scientific systems, and it's gaining momentum. The speed of its emergence has taken a quickened stride in the last three years, with one planned event after another taking place in various parts of the world in order to test and exercise the power of the would-be New World Order. 
under the leadership of self-proclaimed high moral standing people with the backing of a powerful dictatorial government. One need only to watch the daily news to see the patterns of manipulation. The question is, are you watching?